Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I've taken this opportunity to read several pieces that I've put together involving the history of the Bible itself. And I've decided I wanted to share this with you so that you could be more informed about how biblical studies and history of the Bible came out. Now this is not just my opinion, historically speaking, this is documentation that is genuinely universally agreed on by most modern historians within the last century, alhamdulillah. New Testament tells the story of the life of Jesus and the early days of the Christians most notable Paul's efforts to spread Jesus' teachings. It's collected in 27 books, all originally written in Greek. The sections of the New Testament concerning Jesus are collected in the Gospels and were written about 40 years after the early writing of Christian material, the letters of Paul, known as the Epistoline Letters. Paul's letters were distributed by church sometimes around 50 AD, possibly before Paul's death. They were likely to be deployed around before Paul's death. Scribes copied the letters and kept them in circulation. As circulation continued, the letters were collected into books. Some in the church inspired by Paul began to write and circulate their own letters. And so historians believe that some books of the New Testament attributed to Paul were in fact, as we call it, pseudographically written by disciples and imitators. As Paul's words were circulated, an oral tradition began, to uh, began in the church telling stories about Jesus, including teachings and accounts of post-resurrection appearance. Sections of the New Testament attributed to Paul talk about Jesus with a first-hand feeling, but Paul never knew Jesus except in visions, had, and the Gospels were not yet written at the times of Paul's letters, because the Gospels came later. The Gospels themselves are the oral tradition within the church formulated the substance of the Gospels, the early books of which is Mark, written around a 70 common era, 40 years after Isa had left us, peace be upon him. It is theorised that many may have been the original document of sayings known by Jesus as the Q source, which was adopted into the narrative of the Gospels. All four Gospels were published anonymously, but historians believe the books were given the names of Jesus' disciples to prove direct links to, to Isa, giving them, leading them to greater authority. Matthew and Luke were next in chronological, but both used Mark in terms of documentations. And, but Matthew is considered to have another separate source known as the M source, as it contains some different materials from Mark. Both books also stress the proof of Isa's divinity more than Mark did. The book of John, written around 100, well, 96 to 100 common era, was the final of the four Gospels and reputedly had a hostility towards Jesus' Jewish contemporaries. All four books covered the life of Isa with many similarities, but sometimes contradicting each other's in their portrayals. Each is considered to have its own political and religious agenda linking to the authorship, which we do not know. For instance, the book of Matthew and Luke present different accounts of Jesus' birth and all contradict each other about the resurrection. The book of Revelations, the book of Revelations itself is the final book of the Bible and an example of the apocalyptic literature that predi predicted a final celestial war through the prophecy authored in it is inscribed to John but little else is known about the writer and there is no proof to all of this. According to the text, it was written around 95 to 96 common era on an island on the coast of Turkey. Some scholars believe less a prophecy and more a response to the Roman destruction of the Grand Temple of Jerusalem. The text is still used by evangelical Christians to interpret current events, expectation of the end times, and elements of it find frequent use in popular entertainment. Biblical canon of what we know of it, surviving documents from the 4th century show that the different councils within the church released lists to guides how various Christian texts should be treated. The earliest known attempt to create a canon is in the same respect as the New Testament was in the 2nd century Rome by Marikon, a Turkish businessman and a church leader. Marikon's works were focused on the Gospels of Luke and the letters of Paul. Disapproving of these efforts, the Roman church expelled Marikon. 2nd century Syrian writer Tatrian attempted to create a canon by weaving the four Gospels together as a diaceresan or something like that. I can't remember how to pronounce that. The Mauritian canon, which is believed to be dated in the 200 AD, is the earliest complexity of canonic text resembling the New Testament. It was not till the 5th century that the different Christian churches came to basically agree on the biblical canon, the books that eventually were considered canon reflected the times they were embraced as much as the times of the events they portrayed. 
During the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century, books not originally written in Hebrew but Greek, such as Judith and Macbeth, were excluded from the Old Testament. They are known as the Apocrypha and are still included in the Catholic Bible. You see, much of this text and documentation and paperwork is written upon the times, the methodology, and much of the material of their people at their times. But people don't want to discuss this reality. They don't want to discuss how the Bible was constructed or its history. I hope that was informative.